Fear not, the Lord is near. Our gospel lesson for this week comes from Matthew chapter 14. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. I want to place you in the shoes of Peter today. This is a guy who had just helped feed the 5,000 and maybe was 10 groups that he handed food out to. Who knows how many Peter did. But he was able to see the miraculous power that Jesus had to make human elements go farther than they probably should or can by human standards. The setting for this scene for our gospel is from the other gospel lessons we see how the crowd wanted to make Jesus their earthly king. And that wasn't Jesus' goal. His goal wasn't to make heaven here on earth and to allow the people to be lazy by just handing out bread every time they needed it, but rather to save the soul, to feed them so that they can continue on. So he sends the disciples away so that they can't get tempted by this very real power of wanting to be second in command, of wanting to be there with Jesus as he takes on his earthly crown. But that's not what Jesus came to do. So he dismisses the disciples, puts them in a boat and says, go to the other side, I'll meet you there. And then he dismisses the crowd and then he goes up by a mountainside to himself to pray. And there Peter is in the boat. I, I can imagine the type of conversation the disciples are having with one another at this point. I mean, they had seen Jesus do some miraculous things. But this one, they actually were able to do it. They were able to continue to break bread and hand out fish so that people would have food to eat. But I don't think they actually got it yet. I think they were still trying to figure out what the purpose was for that miracle. The Mark account of this miracle of Jesus walking on water says the disciples had hardened hearts. They didn't understand why Jesus was actually giving them the opportunity to help with the feeding of the 5,000. So Peter's in the boat. And as they're going, as it's almost 6 a.m. in the morning, they're exhausted. The wind has been against them the whole time. They're rowing and they can't get very far. And then all of a sudden, there's a mysterious figure on the water. And I want to take you into the culture of the Greeks at this time. They believed all evil spirits came from the water, from the sea, from the rivers. So by cultural standards, the only thing that they possibly could think of that this could be was a ghost, a phantom, more or less an evil spirit. And Jesus comforted them right away. Hey, don't, don't be afraid. It's me. It's you. you know who I am. Take courage. And Peter takes him up on this. Built up by the courage of it actually being Jesus. Lord, since I know that it's actually you, help me to be one who can be powered by you here on earth. That's what it's saying. It's not an if as 
if you are the Lord. I'm not actually sure if you are. It's a since. The way it's translated should probably be since you are the Lord. Tell me, command me to get onto the water and walk to you. Jesus allows the request. Peter didn't tempt Jesus or tempt God or put him to the test by just jumping overboard and, and hoping that he would walk on water. He asked Jesus first. And as he did it, how do you think he got out of the boat? How would you get out of the boat if you were that person that just asked Jesus to walk on water? Would you tiptoe out and kind of place your foot down hoping that it would hold? Would you jump out? Would you just kind of walk as though nothing was happening, trying to show off to the rest of the disciples? However it is that you would get out of that boat, you're out. You're on the water walking to Jesus, astonished. And that's an awesome thing. To be able to have faith so strong that you trust Jesus to move mountains to walk on water, to heal the sick, to drive out demons. But it's not Peter's power. It wasn't Peter's faith that kept him up on the water. It was Jesus' power. The Lord was near, and therefore he told his disciples, don't be afraid, don't fear, because I'm right here with you. And what does Peter do? Remember, the, the wind had been buffeting this ship the entire time. So the wind and waves were up. And instead of keeping his focus on Jesus, who was near to him, he let it go to the extra things. He didn't allow his focus of Jesus and being able to walk on water, however many steps it was from the boat, to continue to compel his faith forward to walk all the way to Jesus. Instead, he let it crumble. He didn't lose saving faith, but he lost the battle of temptation at that moment. This is a good picture of what happens to us. Where we know Jesus is near, he's given us this comfort at the end of the book of Matthew that he is surely with us until the end of the age, and yet we push him to the side, or we look away so that we don't focus on Jesus in the middle of our temptation. The devil only needed us to fail once to win. And our sinful nature, our original sin that we have when we're born into this world, already makes us lose the battle. So let's take another lesson from Peter. Though he starts to sink he doesn't try to rely on his own power to save himself. This is an experienced fisherman, someone who surely could swim, but he didn't say, Lord, I got this, I'm gonna swim back to the boat. He cried out, Lord, save me. When you read through this lesson, you read through the John lesson, you read through the Mark lesson, there's one word that comes up that just strikes you differently immediately. This lesson starts out immediately Jesus made the disciples. When the disciples were afraid that it was a ghost, immediately Jesus comforted them. And when Peter started to fall, immediately Jesus reached out his hand to save. A wonderful lesson that we have from Jesus that he didn't allow Peter to sink so far that he couldn't be saved. He didn't allow Peter to try to do it on his own, but he was there to help because he's near. And so when we find ourselves in the midst of temptation or in the midst of a deep sin that we can't get ourselves out of, let us not rely on our own power or our own strength, but rely on the strength of a Savior who could feed the 5,000, who could walk on water, who could make others do these miracles as well. Because for him, it's a small thing to be able to make food last for 5,000. And so the Lord will provide. The Lord provides for us by giving us his presence near us so that we can live with him forever. Let us use the fifth stanza of I walk in danger all the way as our prayer for today. 
I walk with Jesus all the way. His guidance never fails me. He takes my every fear away when Satan's power assails me. And by his footsteps led, my path I safely tread. In spite of ills that threaten may, I walk with Jesus all the way. Amen.